welcome to the Self Made Book Channel interview series and podcast. I'm Bianca. And I'm Byron. And today we're interviewing the amazing Dr. Kenesha Linton. And we're going to hear all about her career, what it's like to be a professor, and everything else that comes with it, I guess. So here we are. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you very much for having so me. Tell us, who are you? Well, I am a senior lecturer at the University of Greenwich. Yes. I'm not a professor. Oh, not a professor, so, I'm sorry. In different countries, they, call, they, they would call me a professor. But uh-huh. in the UK, we have a system of being a lecturer, senior lecturer, reader, and then a professor. Okay. So the next step for me is to be a reader. And okay. Then I become yeah. a professor. <laughs> what do you have to do to become a reader? Um, well, you have to have a track record in publishing, in academic journals, publishing books getting big research grants for the university. So I am working on that. You're working on that? Yes. How long does it take? Well, it varies. Some persons have done it in five to ten years. I've seen people become professors in like ten years or less. So um, I'm taking it easy because I'm an easygoing girl. Um, (laughs) So who knows? Five to ten years. like like a twang to your... A twang. You, to your accent. I'm Jamaican. Okay. Yeah. Whereabouts? From Mandeville, the okay. centre of the island. Amazing. Yeah. I was going to say somewhere like Barbados. Oh, no, it's like definitely that. not a Bayesian accent. No? No. Uh, no. I knew it was a Jamaican accent. Did you? Yeah. Okay. Being Jamaican and all, you know. Oh! <laughs> <I'm> Jamaican. <laughs> Jamaican. Jamaican. Yeah, we know each other. So. <laughs> so were you born there? Yes, born in Jamaica. I did my first degree in Jamaica at the University of Technology. And then I came to the UK in 2005 to do a master's at the University of Essex. And I always wanted to teach, but I didn't want to teach young people because it's difficult. Um, So I said, I want to teach adults. And in order to teach adults, I have to get to university. I need a PhD. So I stayed in England, I got a scholarship and um, did my PhD at Royal Holloway, Mm. University of London. What did you study? Um, I did a PhD in organisation studies. Well, it's the School of Management. Right. And my PhD falls in the area of organisational behaviour and human resource management. Okay. Specifically, the topic was looking at um, workforce diversity in the Metropolitan Police. Mm. So I had to interview lots of police officers and talk about race and gender and sexual orientation. How was that? As a Jamaican, the sexual orientation part was the hardest bit for me because I found it very uncomfortable to ask people about how their sexual orientation affected their work life. Mm. It just wasn't something that was normal for me at the time back when I was a PhD student. Granted, I've gotten really comfortable talking about all of that now. Um, But back then, when I look back at how I was going about collecting the data, I thought, wow, I missed so many opportunities to get some really good information from people Mm. because I was too shy to ask those questions. Because in Jamaica, you don't talk about being homosexual, you just don't. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it was a cultural difference and me learning to adjust to the British context of having those conversations. So knowing that it would be difficult, what made you choose that thesis? Uh, I think it chose me. <laughs> I, I didn't choose. I, when I was doing my master's, it was in international management at the time at University of Essex. And I wanted to look at, well, there was something happening at the time. I had to do my thesis on something to do with cross-cultural issues. And at the time, there were British police officers working in Jamaica um, as, well, they were expatriates, but they were with the Jamaica Constabulary Force. And they were having some difficulties in terms of the cultural differences and transcultural competence. So I said, oh, I'm going to look into that. And I knew some of those police officers. So I said, would you take part in my research um, interviews? And I had six of them, six British officers, senior, senior officers. Mm-hmm. And so having done my master's thesis on something to do with the police when I proposed doing a PhD I think all the professors at my university were more interested in the police topic than the other topics I was um, proposing so 
I ended up just saying, okay, I'll look at the police mm -hmm. uh, since it seems to be something interesting yeah. to people. Sure. And um, I couldn't do comparative studies because that would mean going to Jamaica a lot and all, mm. and that's expensive. And mm. I already had a scholarship and I couldn't get any more money out of the university. So I said, okay, I'll do something in London. I'll do the Metropolitan Police. Mm -hmm. So that's how it started. Wow. And obviously a thesis is an extremely large document, so I don't mm. want to pretend that we can summarise it in any way. Oh, However, <laughs> what, we, what was the conclusion of your findings? In terms of the um, diversity in the Metropolitan Police Force? So, I remember at the time starting my PhD and coming across the McPherson report and, you know, just learning about the issues around race and gender in these organisations. And um, so I went in from like a complete outsider, outsider to the context of a Londoner and outsider in terms of I don't work for the police. So I was able to look at things from a fresh point of view. And my conclusion was, I know the McPherson report said that there is institutional racism in the police. Um, in my research and through my conversations with the police officers in terms of, I spoke to black and minority ethnic, I spoke to white, I spoke to female, I spoke to male. I had a very mixed sample so I could have a broad understanding of people's view of um, why diversity is important to the work of police and what are the experiences of women and ethnic minorities in the police in terms of how they fit in. Mm -hmm. And um, my conclusion is that it depends on which part of the police service you work in, mm -hmm. your experiences will vary. So um, people's perspective on whether diversity is important or not depends on where they work, which team they're on. Mm -hmm. And so persons who work on, say, for example, the Safer Neighborhood teams, they have their team put more value on diversity and not just diversity, but also everyone on the team understanding different cultures and them learning from each other. So they value each other more because they see being part of a diverse team as being opportunities for them to develop as a better police officer. Whereas if you're on a territorial response team mm -hmm. where the 99 calls come in and they will send out a woman for a rape case or they'll send out somebody who has language skill mm -hmm. for a case that has you know Somalians or something um, they see diversity as just a tool to get the job done okay. so I don't need to learn it I just need to know what they need and I'll find the right person and send it mm -hmm. send send that person so um, people's experience in the police was based on where they were positioned in the police. So persons who aren't safe, um, safer neighborhood teams said, I felt really useful to my team. I felt included. I feel as if I bring something important to the organization. Whereas if you're in another part where you just feel like it's a tick box, mm -hmm. it's like, oh, let's send this Jamaican police officer down to Brixton. Well, to the Jamaican Back thing. in the day, yeah, Brixton. Sure, sure. No, no, more. Not anymore, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> so, um, Not gentrified Brixton. Yeah. yeah, so sometimes the respondents would talk about um, the stereotypes mm -hmm. and, you know, even um, a, a lesbian police officer spoke about being sent to particular parts of Soho just because they know, you know, the LGBT and it's useful, mm. but still it's just... Mm. Everyone should be able to deal with... Yeah, that. everyone should yes. be able to do it, not mm. just me. Mm. So I think it, it, it can come across a bit patronising if you work in certain parts of the organisation where your team doesn't really value mm. diversity in the way that they should. Mm. Yeah. And what is it you teach? Um, I teach human resource management, organizational behavior. Uh, I teach a module called cross-cultural management and diversity management. So it's the first sort of module that covers like the Equality Act and 
teaches the undergraduate students about how to manage diversity in organizations and what's important in terms of diversity strategies and so on. We should have that so, in all modules. Though. It feels like it's something mm, everybody should learn. That's a good point. I think um, diversity is relevant to almost every module I teach. So even though I teach a standalone module called diversity management, I find that the theories I talk about, I will talk about them in organizational behavior, human mm. resource management, and other sort of people-related topics. Yeah. So any topic in the university that has to do with managing people, diversity always comes up. Mm. Yeah. How long have you been teaching at the university now? Um, the University of Greenwich, I started at the University of Greenwich in 2016. Mm -hmm. So February Three. will make... Four years. Four years. Mm -hmm. oh. And it's in twenty now. I haven't gone over yet. My brain hasn't adjusted. <laughs> the roaring twenties. Oh my god. Yes. Um, and in, uh, I've been in academia, like teaching for. Actually, in a few days it will be eleven years exactly. Okay. Yeah. What is the best thing about teaching? The best thing about teaching is, I really love my students. And when they do well, or it's, it's not even when you have a really bright student and they do well, it's when I have a student that doubts themselves mm -hmm. or doesn't apply themselves and I somehow manage to get them to achieve more than they thought they'd achieve. And then you see them at the end of a three-year journey leaving with a first-class honours degree. Okay. That makes me really, really happy to see them reach their potential. Yeah. And what was it about um, your life where you decided teaching was the thing? I know you said you always wanted to do it, but why? I don't have a clue. <laughs> um, <laughs> when you were younger, were you that person who was like teaching yeah. as part of your game? Um, or? So I remember very, very clearly, my, um, I'm a country girl. Uh -huh. So in the backyard, you know how they'd have the lines with the, the laundry hung up mm -hmm. with the clothes pegs, mm -hmm. pinning up the clothes on the line? Um, I would go in the backyard when my mom puts all the clothes on the line and I'd pretend that they're my students and I'd have a stick oh. <laughs> in Jamaica. In Jamaica, you, you can actually smack the yeah. students with the stick when they're rude. So <laughs> I'd be going across, you know, good morning students. And I was like seven years old and pretending to be a teacher and, and smacking the Obviously, the Not real, fresh, yeah. fresh fresh laundry, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. and I, well, it's somebody's T-shirt, and I was like, <laughs> "Oh, rude, <laughs> wrong answer." <laughs> ah. <laughs> so I think I was always I didn't play with dolls that much. I was more sort of fantasizing yeah. about being the teacher. Yeah. So from so you was, was destined old. to do yeah. this. I think so. I love wow. that. I don't think everyone's lucky enough to know what no. they want to do at a young age. I don't I think, think I, I knew. Lucky. I, I don't think I um, was sure because I ended up doing my first degree in, I started doing accounting. So I, I, in, during my high school days, I ended up loving accounts because of my teacher. She was really good. And I loved accounts. So I said, I'm going to be an accountant. So I went down the accounting route. First year of accounting in university, I found it really boring and I gave up. I said, I'm going to do marketing. So I can be a marketing manager and travel the world and, you know, be in charge of big brands. I never worked a day in marketing. After did you, doing, did you, did you, you finish the degree? It? Yes, I finished a degree in marketing. And Ooh. then I did a master's in international business. Oh, okay. So I was like, ah, I still wasn't sure what Something I wanted to business, do. Yeah. And then I said, you know what? I want to teach. Mm. I don't remember. I think I was speaking to one of my lecturers in Jamaica when I went home to do the data collection for the master's thesis. And um, the, he asked me, what are you gonna do with your master's? And I'm like, I don't know, maybe I'll become a consultant or maybe I can teach like you. And he was like, well, if you want to teach, are you sure you want to teach? I was like, I've always wanted to, but I don't know if I can. And he mm. says, well, do a PhD and just teach at university. I think that was the conversation mm, yeah. that got me seriously thinking about teaching in universities. Mm. Yeah. I so, like it. Yeah. Um, if you could, uh, we, w we were interested to know some fun facts about you and something perhaps your <laughs> students don't know, but you're happy to share. Um, well, I'm a, 
I have an identical twin. Mm -hmm. She lives in Jamaica. She's a fashion designer. But that's nothing about me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's quite interesting. Yeah. <laughs> when so, yeah, they, come people... to, they come to lecture one day and there's, there's, there's this other two. woman. <laughs> that has happened. Oh, okay. that has <laughs> happened. When she visits, I um, take her to my university and I say, okay, go into the lecture theatre and just say hello. So she goes to the front. She's like, hi, everyone. And they're, as usual, you know, waiting for me to start the lecture. And then I walk in after her, like, <laughs> 10 seconds. I said, hi, everyone. And they're like, oh, my gosh. There are two of you. I do that. It sounds like a fun annual yes. game. <laughs> and, every year, year, right? <laughs> and every year, it's a new batch of students. Yeah, of so the, the joke never gets stale. <laughs> it never gets stale. Yeah, so, identical twin. We love to pull pranks. Love it. Anything else? Do you have any skills that or like talents? I'm an artist. Okay. So I did A-level art and um, I like doing portraits of people, but... I just don't have the time. Sketch or painting? Painting. painting. I like painting. I can sketch. Uh -huh. black, I like, but black and white can be a bit boring. So. What takes up your time? Being an academic. You know, <laughs> I have to, you know, teach. I have to write books and book chapters or, you know, journal articles and yeah. go to conferences and do research projects and... I just, um, with a team of colleagues, we just won a research grant with the British Council to do research on diversity. Congratulations. Um, yay. <laughs> and um, <laughs> that's going to be intense mm. research. So I really don't have the time. And outside of that, I really love to travel. Like I try to go somewhere every month. Every month? Every month. So your passport has got lots of stamps? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Europe, like I Europe understand. every month or, or, or like I, one Are year I managed to do every month okay but last year I did I think 10 months that's a great I love 10 that. times I'm trying to understand because you, you teach so when when but how many lessons we talked about this earlier about university does it have to be how many days are no wait, wait, wait no hang to, on it doesn't have my to lectures be. are not allowed to travel what like <laughs> how dare they what do you mean you don't, how? You don't have to go far far yeah. yeah I know but we're lucky in the UK I don't think people take advantage yeah. of how close we are to other countries so yeah, I don't do access to travel yeah but maybe I don't, not soon I don't do long trips during term time. Mm -hmm. Actually, that's a lie. <laughs> because my birthday is in February mm. and I always fly to Jamaica. Well, not always. The last three birthdays yeah. I've spent in Jamaica. So, How, so I guess you can get someone to cover you. It's like any other job. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so we have team teaching. So I always say, okay, this particular week in February... Make sure you do the lectures. <laughs> I'll do any other lecture across the year, yeah. but that week in February, not do doing it. I'm not going to be in the university. <laughs> yeah. So I arrange it from the beginning for my colleagues. And they have the same because they have dates when they don't want of to course. be around. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and they said, well, um, this is half term. Can you do it? Mm. I don't have a family. So yeah. I'm like, I don't need half term as yeah, yet. Yeah. You know? yeah. so. And I guess the teaching, I feel like in university, the teaching isn't as sequential as it is in like A levels. Yeah. For our friends that are teachers who work every day. Yeah. It to has teach to be like day. You don't, sequential. You so someone every else day? comes in. No, I don't teach every day. Yeah. I, I teach two days a week. What? <laughs> study and become a lecturer it sounds, sounds like a good life sounds, but there's a lot of research exactly, and writing of books and, and publishing yes yeah. yeah, so I don't mind that it sounds easy but Hank, do we get paid for uh, see we uh, do we get paid for writing and publishing well you're hired you have a contract your academic contract involves um, your okay. teaching your research your admin it's all part of it. everything's one big uh, yeah job yeah. and um you you just find the time to do every bit yeah. of it. So, for example, this weekend, when everybody's out having a wonderful time, I'll be marking essays mm. because because the students submitted their essays and in two weeks' time they want their grades back. Mm -hmm. So, could you mark an essay over a glass of wine or something like that? Is that allowed? 
I mean, the answer, the official answer is no, obviously, Byron. Well, yeah, I'm just like, you know... Like, no, how, no, no, don't how, how answer. Comfort- I don't want you to <laughs> how in any way jeopardise... How comfortable your, does one, you're not, one be? One is not allowed to... Officially, is the yeah. answer is no. Well, can, can one mark abroad, then, you know, just take the work with you and... and oh, I do that all the time. Okay, I do so that, that all the time. Yeah. Okay. I'm just... I'm really, he's really just about to apply I'm for your job. <laughs> I will be on the beach with my laptop marking essays. I've and done it's it all the time. digital now, isn't it? Yes. They submit their oh, essays online. Back, online. Back in the day, I had to go and print and oh yeah, and run with the and, and drop it, and, drop and, drop it in, and then they convert it. it in my, last, my final year. What happens if there's a technological error though, and you have officially sent it? No, you get a seat, don't you? you get like a. Oh, okay, yeah. there must be times though where there's a malfunction. What? Oh, there are, and students will email and say, um, "I submitted my essay, but something's wrong." Hmm. And they'll email it a and they'll copy in the okay. administrator so that they have the or, the official copy mm. um, via email. So it's still it's a digital submission. It just doesn't get the seal. So for my Sorry, job. just a random go on. one. Okay, go on. Go on random. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll stay on track and then you can go random. Okay. I just want to know <laughs> what a day in life is like being a uh, lecturer at Greenwich University. Before, okay, before you answer that, mine is not that random now, I realise. Okay, so, just based on this whole digital submission, I don't want to go off topic just for a second. Yeah. At my university, we had something called a dissertation dash, mm-hmm. where you basically ran, um, and everyone, was, a picture of everyone that stood like along the sides near the library, and you ran up the middle with your dissertation to hand it in, and it was basically meant to be the people who were last minute would run with their dissertation to hand it in. If it's all digital submissions... Is there no dissertation dash anymore? And did you really do that, or did no, you? No, well, no, I, was, I handed my dissertation in early because I'm that and type of person. Your and then I ran for the dash because it was fun. Well, <laughs> no, the cameraman is nodding. He knows this is what happens. I was just looking at the camera. <laughs> Go on, anyway. Sorry. So <laughs> I was that type of student that yeah. did the dissertation dash. Mm. I'm really naughty. Oh, so you actually did it, or you did it I for fun did. like I did? No, I oh, did the dissertation it dash. Okay, I did it <laughs> because I was just one of those students okay, fine. like students look at me and they're like but you're my lecturer you're supposed to be like the perfectionist like no i was a student so when i see them <laughs> submitting things at the last minute i was like i know the drill you're going students will email yeah. me two days before the essays do asking for feedback and i'll give it to them because i remember when i was a student <laughs> the good that was days. exactly what I was doing and I, and I didn't have lecturers who were willing to give me feedback two days before the no, due date yeah. so whenever I can, can I do, do. sometimes you know that dialogue you don't understand that you can get feedback and... that's my point I was saying earlier that I think it's, it's on you as a student to create that relationship with your lecturer so that you can have that communication mm-hmm. and I don't feel like I did that enough with most of my lecturers mm. oh they, they I've had Twitter messages. Oh no, so that's different. Direct Social messages. Media messages. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're not supposed DMs. to. You're not you? supposed to. When they DM me on Instagram or whatever, I'll say, please send me an email through the official, official university. university. Yeah. 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 I mean, at least LinkedIn. <laughs> well, I get LinkedIn. I'm not saying that would work. But there, there are students who don't use their university email but they'll go and follow you on social media and try to talk to you on social media. But like, I'm sorry, I didn't even realise it was a student when I accepted this person. Oh. But I just tell them up front, sorry, I can't give you any feedback via this channel because it's not official. Yeah, so. of course. Yeah. But well, sorry, about what was your the, final question? Sorry. I didn't answer yes. your question, actually, about yeah. the dissertation. So what happens is... The system crashes because everybody tries to submit it in the last few minutes. So what happens then? So that's a real dash problem. That's their problem. Digital dash. That's their problem. Because that's that's why students who try to submit between 11.30pm and midnight always have problems because everybody is trying. So we always tell them... Do not submit your essay. But that's not that Within half... T- and we don't, but that's the, the, the deadline. Te- the technicality is the deadline actually, is midnight. Actually, That means no. your technology is no, not no, sufficient. No, 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 no. It's no, no, no. Like PM. So, so what happens? The deadline is always 3 p.m. But the system, and the students know this, the system um, you submit allows you to submit up until midnight oh. without it being late. So they know this, but... So if they submit after 3 p.m. and anything goes wrong, so they're covered. It's yeah, of course, problem. no problem. So I had a little hack, right? <laughs> so the deadline was like in the afternoon, I can't remember, like, call it 3 p.m., right? Okay. Mm-hmm. 
but you could post your your uh, dissertation or whatever it was yes. in. This was before. As long as it. So, you, but you had to get proof of postage. Proof of postage, yes. So your so I had a post office that closed at eight pm. Mm. So I could have an extra like six or five or six hours. So the proof of postage just needed to say that day. It yes. didn't say. It didn't say the that didn't say the time. Correct. Wow. That's because crazy. now your receipt would say the time. Maybe now I don't know, but, <laughs> okay. but, you're, but on the no, it wouldn't because when they it was back in the day, you get a stamp, you get a physical. It's like a proper. Well, how stamp. did you prove it? You had a receipt. You had a yeah. recorded. No, it was delivery. like a stamp. It's stamped with the day's date. With oh, the date. you mean you just sent it first class or whatever? It's stamped with the date. No, you was like an actual ink stamp. Yeah, ink stamp. stamp. That's right. I get it. And you was able I to. It. I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah. That's good. Yeah. But yeah. This is, that's but not as bad they, as this but scenario. But now you can't do that. You yeah, see, that scenario is and I like students like that. Okay. When I see students being really ingenious and really <laughs> clever with stretching the deadline, yes. I'm like, you're going to go far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, I probably really found like a, a, yeah. a, you know, a post office student in, hacks. in wherever it was that, ed, that closed late. And I'm like, yeah, okay. I'll just yeah. work it next to here all day. Yeah. Give me an extra six hours. You know oh, how dude. to stretch... Stretch the rules. It's, the, stretch it's the within the boundaries bend, yeah. of bend the rules. No, 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 stretch. Stretch, yeah, not, not bend, bend. not stretch. Yeah, stretch. Okay, fine. I like that. I'm not going to use bend rules anymore. Stretch, stretch the rules. I like that. Mm. That's a good point. That's my new They're rule. flexible. Yeah. <laughs> As in life, right? The rules are there for us to... Stretch. Stretch. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I love That's it. That's not going to be the title of this video. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> rules are there to be stretched, guys. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, it's good. What was your final question? You had a question. Um, oh, she, he asked about the day in the life. Yeah, day in the life. Want, we want a day in the life as a, a <sighs> lecturer at Greenwich. Day in the life, it depends which day. Mm. I don't have to go in on Mondays because I don't teach on Mondays. So it Sounds like you do go in, though. I don't. This Monday, I'm not going in. What would you be doing? So on Monday, I will wake up, normal time, probably 7 o'clock. Who? What's that mean? Mm. I'll wake up at 7 o'clock <laughs> right, yeah. on a day when I don't have to go in. Yeah. I wake up at 7 o'clock. <laughs> Let's stress about it. Go on. 7 o'clock, you're, you're getting off the train somewhere, are you? <laughs> no. We go to bed really late. Yeah, we so we, bed so we're not morning We, we, go, to, morning we go to bed between like midnight and 4 a.m. Yeah, because we're working. Oh. Stress on the thing. Yeah. Yeah. So we're not morning people. Uh-huh. That's my staff in the test. So that's when you're saying 7. <laughs> He doesn't know what that means. I'm like, well, it I'm depends. Saying. If I'm up writing over the weekend or marking, mm-hmm. I'll probably sleep through the morning a little bit. So, but I find... <laughs> yes. No, I, I have sometimes. You slept till nine. Okay, yeah. all right, fine. So anyway, you get up at seven. I mean, it's your you fault. Get up. No, no, sorry, sorry, sorry. So you get up at seven. Go on. Go on. You get up, you're working from home. Mm-hmm. So you, you know... Fluffy slippers, yeah. robe, mm. cup of tea. <laughs> cup of tea. <laughs> yeah, and at my laptop, well, I have a desk with a big screen because I like big screen, yeah. but my laptop's attached to it. Yeah. Um, and start my work. Mm. I'll have a meeting with students via Skype. Mm. Audio Skype, so they yeah. don't see me in, in the road. Pajamas. Yeah. <laughs> if I have to do video Skype, because sometimes for um, meetings with my colleagues, like research meetings, I have to change. Get dressed half. So, exactly. So, I'll put <laughs> we'll on a there. smart top, <laughs> yeah. and pyjamas, yeah. and slippers <laughs> on the bottom, and you have your meetings. So, work from home day is just like lots of admin mm-hmm. and lots of Skype meetings, and preparing my lecture material for the next day, you know, going over my notes, whatever. I feel Answering like students. the life of a lecturer is sounding really good right now. Two days. But then my Tuesdays, yeah. oh. if you find me on a Tuesday, hmm. it's mayhem. Oh. Because I'm teaching like six hours. Because oh. for some reason, the timetabling, five hours, my timetabling has all of my tutorials and lectures on the same I think day. Good. I love that too. Yeah. Then, yeah. 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 I know I go in on Tuesday and it's my day to just smash, you know, out. smash mm. all yeah. the teaching out. Mm. So I'll be just from class to class. I'll probably have a lunch break and then I'll have another break where I'll meet students and then another break. But it's always, it's full on. Yeah. My, my Tuesdays are full on. Wednesdays are usually like research meetings. Sometimes I have to go in, sometimes not. Mm-hmm. So like 
at least twice per month, I have to go in on a Wednesday for a research meeting. Thursdays, teaching in the evening. Okay. So I can work from home in the morning, mm-hmm. and then I go in in the afternoon, say about 2 o'clock, and I teach up until 7 p.m. Okay. So... And then Friday? Oh. Friday. I don't like yeah. anything timetable. Yeah, yeah. Friday. <laughs> Friday is my research day. Saturday, yeah. Sunday, oh. Friday is the day when you get to really catch up on yeah. reading of what's been published and working on your own research papers and other things. So to be a lecturer, to do. do you always have to have a PhD? I... No. Okay. I know of lecturers who do not have PhD, but there's a... There's a, they, 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 they call them teaching fellows. Okay. Um, and so on. But it's very rare that you find uh, someone without a PhD who progressed beyond mm. a senior lecturer level. Sure. It happens, mm. but it's very rare. Senior. Okay. Because so we don't see entrepreneurs sometimes, like entrepreneurs who go in mm. and deliver business courses and so on. Mm. They don't have PhDs, but they're delivering based on yes. their experience. Yeah. What's their title? I have a few of them on my team, so I um, quite a few practitioners, so mm. people who are HR consultants and mm-hmm. work in HR, um, they teach on my modules mm-hmm. because I've even though I teach theories about HR and managing people in the mm. workplace, I've never worked as an mm. HR mm. practitioner, mm. so they're able to bring the lived experience yeah, of the organizations the yeah. so i'll go and give the lecture with all the theory mm. and they'll do the tutorials where they can apply those okay. theories mm. and what are they called what teaching they fellows teaching, teaching fellows. fellows there you go so you can be a teaching fellow but there there are some that are there's some that are at my university they're called teaching fellow at other universities they're called visiting lecturers visiting, visiting lecturers. lecturers there you go yeah. sorted Oh. Well, I've done the visiting lectures at my university. Have you? Yes, I did one last month. Why well, do you not pay attention to anything I tell you? Well done. <laughs> I might be inviting you to be visiting Thank lectures. Thank you. <laughs> I am open. <laughs> well, we do have really good entrepreneurial um, programs mm. and students who are interested in being entrepreneurs, well, who are budding entrepreneurs. Excellent. Mm. Winning the mayor's entrepreneurial challenges and all these things. Sign me up. Oh, love that. Love it. Okay. You, you can inspire them. <laughs> we try. <laughs> so what is the one piece of advice you'd like to give our audience? And that's either, it could be about living a career that you love, it could be about being a lecturer, it could be about life in general, whatever you like. What's the one big bit of advice you'd like to give them? I can't even think. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I hope you can ask us one question. Your book, mm-hmm. Self-Made, mm-hmm. Is it on reading lists for students? So, excellent question. Um, it's not a question I can answer. I don't know. I don't, <laughs> I don't even know, what know? Reading, where you find reading lists. Well, all these business lecturers, yeah. and we have modules that focus on entrepreneurship. Mm. Well, it will be so, on so, so many reading lists by yeah. the next couple of months. Yeah. So, it's exactly, so I'm be... like... I'm going to find out from the entrepreneur lecturers in my department. Should, do you have this book on the list? Did yeah. you did you this see the promo from there is um what's that gentleman, that motivational speaker that Les gave Brown. Les Les gave a really good shout <laughs> out to Come his on, book. Les, Sorry, Les I know. Yeah. <laughs> that so, is a great point. I know yeah. my my university have it in their library. I know that. But it's not reading list. But I don't think it's on a reading list. It should be on a reading list. Like that. I need to email them and ask that. It's not acceptable on their alumni. How can yeah. they not? No, so, because, yeah. And just because it's great, obviously. If they have modules that have anything to do with entrepreneurship, yeah. get it on the reading list. It, yeah, it includes so many So it's, it's a required reading. Required so reading. students reading. will actually get the book. And you have hundreds of students doing these <sighs> modules every year. You can come back next time. <laughs> you <laughs> so I'm right. just giving you a tip for keeping some of your rules. <laughs> that is great. We love it. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. I am happy to be invited. <laughs> it's absolute pleasure. So thank you very much. Thank you guys for tuning in. I really hope you enjoyed our conversation. As with 
always with all of our videos remember to like comment subscribe tell a friend tell a friend and all that good stuff so if you enjoyed this make sure you do that i've been bianca and i'm byron and self-made is success thank you very much bye, -bye, bye.